This is going to be the third chapter, uh, excuse me, the third lecture of chapter 10. Uh, we're going to cover kinetic energy of rotation and also the moment of inertia. All right, so let's look at kinetic energy first. Um, for an extended rigid body, uh, treat, uh, treat the body as a collection of particles with different speeds and add up all the kinetic energies of the particles to find the total kinetic energy of the body. So essentially what this is saying is, let's say you know we have some kind of circle, something like that, um, that's rotating. What, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take all the particles, um, kinetic energies, and just add them all up. All right, so for instance, what that would look like is the total kinetic energy was going to be one half times the part, first particle's mass times its velocity squared plus the second particle's mass times its velocity squared plus you know so on and so forth and oops and eventually you're going to see that the total kinetic energy would then equal the summation of one half m i v i right just all the different particles sort of added up together well, we want to look at this in rotational terms. Um, so we know that the velocity is equal to, oops, is equal to omega r. As such, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into our equation. So the total kinetic energy is going to be equal to the summation of one half times the mass times the rotational. Uh, speed or the angular speed and that doesn't change for the object right that as long as you're talking about a rigid object that's going to be the same for all objects so that uh, so it'll, we don't need to put a subscript I there because that won't be changing however the radius does change right and then that's going to be squared all right so essentially this simplifies to the summation of one half omega squared oops sorry We'll take that we'll put the summation later so just one half omega squared and then the summation of mi ri squared all right uh, so the question is what is this term right here and how do we make that a little more manageable right it's kind of difficult to look at a, at an object and and look at all of its particles and 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 figure out all the kinetic energies right there must be some easier way so it turns out that this term here is called the rotational inertia. Right? Sometimes it's referred to as the moment of inertia, as they say here. Um, and it's going to be a constant for a particular body. So uh, for instance, if, if it's a, a sphere, it's going to have a certain rotational inertia. If it is a particular uh, disk or a rod, right? different objects are going to have different rotational inertias. Um, we're going to look at uh, shortly how we how we find those, uh, but this essentially lets us take our kinetic energy equation and simplify it to one half i omega squared. All right, so on the next slide here, all right, so this is yeah, that's for our kinetic energy. So let's figure out how we figure out i. So on the next slide, you see that it shows that. I can be written in this form, right? So we took our summation and we wrote it in integral form, essentially saying we're looking at each individual mass element dm on the object, and we're multiplying it by the radius squared, right? If you notice, if you're looking at our summation, that's exactly what we have here in our summation, right? Some mass times the radius squared. Okay, um, so Generally, there's this chart here that gives you the values for, or at least the equations, for the moment of inertia for different types of objects. So you notice we have a hoop um, that has a very thin uh, cylinder around the edge. You might have a hoop that has a more thick cylinder where you have two different radius um, that you're going to measure, right? and they give you what the moment of inertia here. So in this case, it's just going to be I, or the moment of inertia is just mr squared. Um, if there is some thickness to the cylinder, it's going to be one half m r one squared plus m r two squared, right, and so on and so forth. If it's a solid cylinder, it's going to be one half m r squared. Spheres have particular uh, moment of inertias. Plates have particular inertias, um, etc. Right, and it also depends on where the axis is. So if you if you notice on the top left here, this is has the axis of rotation going through the middle of the hoop, 
where this has it going sort of along with the hoop, right, in this direction. So where the axis is also matters as far as what the moment of inertia is. All right, so we're going to look at a little bit later calculating some moment of inertias. Uh, but for now, let's talk about what the parallel axis theorem says. Um, so it says that if h is a particular distance between a given axis and the axis through the center of mass, these two axes being parallel, right? So if you look at this axis here, which is the axis of the center of mass at point O, and then some other axis here, right? So if, we, if we're essentially trying to find the moment of inertia of an object, um, and we're and we're trying to find it not at the center of mass. We're essentially trying to find it along an axis that's parallel, but it's some distance away from the uh, the moment or the uh, center of mass. Okay, so then the moment of inertia can be given simply by this equation. All right, so the moment of inertia can be given by if we knew the moment of inertia of the center of mass, and we simply add the total mass times h squared, and where h is the distance between the two axes. Um, okay, so let's look at how this formula came about. Um, so here it just shows you, you know, uh, a little more about the situation. It says let O being the center of mass and also the origin of the coordinate system of the arbitrarily shaped object. So this is sort of the arbitrarily shaped object we're talking about. Consider an axis through O perpendicular to the plane of the figure and another axis through P, right? So we have these two axes here. Let X and Y be the coordinate systems um, labeled as, as our constants A and B. All right, so we have this is H, this is going to be A, this is going to be B, and they're on the XY coordinate system. And then let dm be a mass element with the general coordinates x, y. The rotational inertia of the body should be given as such. All right, so dm is going to be just some mass element inside of this uh, oddly shaped object. All right, so how we would have to calculate this is, of course, using the moment of inertia equation, which is the integral of r squared dm. Okay, so that's going to be equal to the integral, well, r squared is going to be this distance here, essentially. So it's going to be x minus a, right? so this distance here, which would be x minus a, and then also this distance here squared gets us r. Right? So you square this, square this, uh, take the square root, and that gets you r. All right, so that, since we're squaring r, we get rid of the square root, and what we're left with is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared and that's multiplied by dm okay so this kind of looks messy right you have these being squared there's variables in here there's two different variables in here um, which can get complicated um, you also have uh, this dm here that we have to deal with which is another variable but let's just sort of let's multiply all of this out right and then combine some of the terms all right so uh, I'm just going to do this relatively quickly. If you want to uh, work out each step, you're more than welcome to do that on your own. But when we multiply this out, we get one term that's going to be the integral of x squared plus y squared dm. Right, Essentially, dm is we multiply it by every term inside of here. And since there's going to be a lot of additions and subtractions, I can just take this integral and look at each term individually. Okay, so we have this first term. Uh, then the second term is going to be minus 2a times the integral of x dm. Right, that's going to be multiplied here, here in this first term here. Minus 2b times the integral of y dm. Right, that's coming from this term here. And then our last term is going to be plus the integral of what's left, which is going to be an a squared plus b squared dm. Okay, so this actually simplifies quite nicely for us. This here ends up just being zero. Right? This is just going to go to zero. The first term, well, this here is just r squared. Right, x squared plus y squared is just going to be our radius 
essentially squared, right, directly to this element, um, which is essentially like if we went from the center mass straight to here and called that R, Okay, and therefore this here is going to be I of the center mass, right? Because this is the integral of R squared dm, right? Which is exactly our equation for the um, a moment of inertia of the center mass. And then this last term here is mh squared. Right, because this here is m, I'm sorry, this here is h squared, right, because it's the square root of a squared plus b squared, as you can see that here. So that's h, and then all you have left, and that's a constant, so that doesn't change, so you have the integral of dm, which is just the total mass, right, so that would just be capital M. So essentially what you're left with is the parallel axis theorem, right, just saying that you have the um, moment of inertia at the center of mass, multiplied by mh squared. Okay, let's move on. Let's use, to do some example problems. Okay, so in this problem, we start simple. We're just looking at two specific uh, point particles, one here and one here. They both have a mass of m. We're trying to find the rotation of inertia about an axis that goes right between the center. Now, in this case, the rod that connects these two objects is negligible. It has a negligible mass, so we're not going to worry about the rod. We're just looking at the two point particles. Okay, so our moment of inertia is going to be, and we're going to use, since we're talking about two specific particles, we're just going to use the summation formula. We don't need to do an integral because we're not talking about a solid object. Okay, so that's going to be equal to, oops, let me go back. So this is going to be equal to mass of the first one times its distance away from the axis, which is 1 half L, right, as you can see here, squared, plus uh, the same thing. So little m, 1 half L squared. Right, adding those two together, of course, you're just going to get uh, 1 half ML squared. Right, because you're going to square this, so it's 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half. All right, so the moment of inertia of two point particles, if you have the center of mass is right between them, or excuse me, if the um, axis of rotation is right in the middle of them is going to be 1 half ML squared. All right, so part B asks us, what is the rotational inertia of the body about an axis through the left end of the rod? All right, so this time we're looking at the, the axis over here on the left end. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be the summation of each of the particles. All right, so this is going to be mass times its distance away. So its distance away from the axis of rotation is actually zero, this first one. So that's just going to be zero squared plus mass times, this is going to be a full L distance away right here. So this is just going to be L squared. All right, so in this case, the moment of inertia is simply ML squared. Okay, um, so there's another way we could have done that, because we knew the moment of inertia of the center of mass, right, because the center of mass is located right here. So we could use the parallel axis theorem to find that as well. So let's try that method. All right, parallel axis theorem says we just take the uh, moment of inertia of the center of mass and add mh squared. Oops. So when we do that, our moment of inertia of the center of mass was 1 half ml squared. And then this is going to be the total mass, which I'll go ahead and rewrite. Oops. Go ahead and rewrite as 2m times its distance away from the center mass, which is simply 1 half l squared. Okay, so we just add these two together. And we'll see we get 1 half ml squared plus, this is going to be 1 half ml squared, so we get ml squared, right? Which is the same answer as before. 
All right, so the parallel axis theorem works there as well. All right, let's move on to another example. All right, well, how now let's look at a rod that is, uh, it actually has some mass to it, right? So there's an even distribution of mass throughout the entire thin rod. Now, because it's a even distribution of mass, now we have to use the integral form as they show you down here. All right, to find the rotational inertia. Um, so we want to integrate with respect to coordinate x, not m, as indicated in the integral. Um, so we must relate mass dm of an element of the rod to its length dx. So essentially we have a problem, right? We have two variables here. r is going to change and dm is going to change. It'd be nice if we only had one. So we need to write dm in terms of x so that we can uh, do this integral. All right, so how we do that. All right, let's start with our moment of inertia equation. It's the integral of r squared dm. Okay, so let's look at dm. Well, we know that the, it's evenly distributed. So the ratio of dm to dx should be the same as the total mass to the total length, right? When this, which in this case is going to be L. Right, this ratio should be the same. So I'm just going to take this ratio and solve it for dm. When I do that, I get m over L times dx. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. Now that I have something that relates dm to dx, I can replace it in this equation. Right, so the moment of inertia is going to be integral. And I'm going to replace r with x, just so we keep our terms the same. It's going to be x squared times ml, or m over l, dx. Oops, let's go back. Uh, and we, we want to make this a definite integral, because we know what our limits are. So since our axis of rotation is right down the center here, we're going from a negative l over 2 on the x, in the x direction to an l over 2. Right, so our limits of integration are going to be negative L over 2 to L over 2. All right, so let's write this a, a little more uh, simply so that we can do our integration. This is a constant. It doesn't change, so I can pull that out of the integral. So this is going to be M over L times the integral from negative L over 2 to L over 2 of X squared dx. All right, well now it's in a form that looks pretty simple, right? We're just taking the integral of x squared. So the integral of x squared, of course, is x cubed divided by three. All right, so that gets us m over three L. I'm pulling that one third out to simplify things. And then what I have left is going to be um, our limits which is negative L over 2 to L over 2. So when we evaluate our limits, we always want to do top minus bottom. Right? And we're doing this of x cubed. So when I plug in L over 2 for x cubed, what I get is L over 2 cubed. And then I subtract off the bottom. Right, The bottom is negative L over 2 cubed. Okay, So I evaluated the limits there. All right, so now I can just simplify this and solve for the answer. All right, so when I do that, I get 3, I'm sorry, m over 3l. This is going to be l cubed over 8 plus l cubed over 8, okay, which of course is 2l cubed over 8 or 1 fourth l cubed. Go ahead and pull the one fourth out, and what we are left with is m l squared, right? Because there's one l over down here, so we're going to get rid of one of the l's. We end up with an l squared over 12. Okay, and that's the moment of inertia of a thin rod. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. So what is the rod's moment of inertia about a new rotation axis that's perpendicular to the rod and through the left end? Okay, so I'm not looking at um, through the center anymore. I'm going to move the rotation axis 
over here to the left end, right? And we'll see what happens. Well, I can simply use the parallel axis theorem, right? Because I know what the moment of inertia is of the center mass. We found that last time, right? That's going to be ml squared over 12. So I'll just use the parallel axis theorem to get the answer. All right, so that says I is equal to the moment of inertia of the center of mass plus total mass times h squared. Right, so this is simply going to be ml over 12 plus m, and then our distance away is l over 2 squared. Right, so this is, oops, this is going to be 1 fourth ml squared plus 1 twelfth ml squared ends up being 1 third ml squared. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Uh, there will be one more lecture. We'll talk about torque.